Hey everyone, want to know how hackers exploit websites? Today we're diving into common web hacking attacks using the DAM Vulnerable Web Application, or DVWA. You'll see how these attacks work and how to stop them. Let's jump in. First up, one of the most dangerous web vulnerabilities that hackers absolutely love, cross-site scripting, or XSS for short. There are two main types. Reflected XSS targets individual users through crafted links. But stored XSS, that's the nightmare scenario because it saves the malicious script permanently on the server. Let's see both of these in action. There's our reflected XSS alert. This might look harmless, but in reality, that script could steal your login cookies, capture your um, keystrokes, or redirect you to a fake banking site. Scary stuff. And there's our stored XSS. Notice how it triggered again when we reloaded the page. That's because the malicious script is now permanently saved in the database, hitting every visitor automatically. This is why security experts consider stored XSS much more severe than reflected XSS. So how do we stop these attacks? The secret weapon is output encoding. When users submit dangerous input like script tags, we convert those special characters into safe HTML entities. The less than symbol becomes ampersand LT semicolon and the greater than symbol becomes ampersand GT semicolon. This ensures these elements are displayed as harmless text rather than being interpreted as executable code. You've actually seen this protection in action. Ever notice weird character combinations on websites like Google Classroom or forums? That's output encoding working behind the scenes to keep you safe from XSS attacks. All right, let's talk about something sneaky called CSRF. That's cross-site request forgery. Don't worry about the fancy name. Just think of it as a digital pickpocket trick. Here's how it used to work. Imagine you're logged into your bank account and then you click on what looks like a harmless link. Maybe someone sent you a funny dog video. But surprise, that link secretly tells your bank to transfer money to a hacker's account. Scary, right? Let me show you this in action using our practice site, DVWA. I'm going to create a malicious link that changes someone's password without them realizing it. Watch what happens when I visit this URL. Boom, just like that, the password changed from password to new pass. Hmm. And the user had no idea they were being attacked. But here's the good news. Modern web browsers have gotten much smarter. They now use something called the same site cookie attribute. Think of it as a bouncer at a club who checks IDs and only lets in requests from trusted websites. However, as developers, we can't just rely on browsers to protect us. We need to implement CSRF tokens. These are like secret handshakes between your website and your users. Every time someone wants to change something important, they need to provide the correct token. Remember, the internet is constantly evolving and so are the bad guys. All right, let's dive into something absolutely terrifying called file inclusion attacks. These come in multiple flavors and they can completely compromise a website in seconds. Think of it like a master burglar who doesn't break down your door. Instead, they trick your house into unlocking every room for them. First up, local file inclusion or LFI. Let me show you this in action. I'm going to visit our vulnerable DVWA site, but instead of viewing a boring normal page, I'm going to use those sneaky dot dot slash sequences to climb up the directory tree and completely break out of the website's safe zone. Are you ready for this? Holy cow. Just like that, I use directory traversal to climb all the way up to the system's root and grab the password file. This is a critical system file that lists every user account on the server. It's like getting the employee directory for the entire building. Those dot dot slash sequences basically told the server, hey, go up, up, up through the folders until you hit the attic where all the good stuff is hidden. But hold on to your hat, it gets way worse. Now let me blow your mind with remote file inclusion, or RFI. 
This isn't just reading local files anymore. This is where hackers force the website to reach across the internet, download malicious code from their own servers, and then execute it immediately. I've set up a simple web server on my attacking machine that's hosting a nasty PHP file. Now watch what happens when I tell this poor, vulnerable website to fetch and run my remote file. This is like convincing someone to download a virus and install it themselves. Boom! The website just became my puppet. It downloaded and executed code directly from my server. In a real attack, this could install a backdoor, steal databases, or give hackers complete remote control of the entire system. So how do we stop this digital nightmare? Developers need to be absolutely ruthless about input validation. Strictly sanitize file paths, block those dangerous dot dot slash sequences like they're radioactive, and treat all user input like it's coming from your worst enemy. Most importantly, disable risky PHP settings like allow URL include in your server configuration. It's like removing the master key from under your doormat. Here's the bottom line. If your website lets users control what files it loads, you're not just handing over the keys to your digital house. You're giving them the deed, the alarm codes, and a welcome mat. Let's dive into command injection. This is where things get really scary because hackers can actually run system commands directly on the server through a vulnerable web application. Think of it like getting a backdoor into the computer itself. So here we are on DVWA's command injection page. You'll see this innocent looking ping utility that's supposed to let you ping IP addresses to test connectivity. But watch what happens when we get creative with our input. Instead of just entering a normal IP like localhost, I'm going to add something sneaky. I'll type localhost and who am I and boom, look at that. Not only did it ping the address, but it also executed our who am I command and revealed that the server is running as www data. That's the web server's user account. Now this might seem harmless, but we just proved we can run any system command we want. Let's try something else. This time I'll enter localhost and date. Perfect. Now we can see the current date and time from the server's perspective. This might seem innocent, but here's the terrifying part. If I can run a simple command like date, what's stopping me from running commands to list files, delete data, steal databases, or even install malware? As a hacker, proving I can execute any command is like getting the keys to the kingdom. So how do we stop this nightmare scenario? Three key defenses. First, never directly execute user input as system commands. Second, if you absolutely must interact with the system, use proper input sanitization and validation. And third, consider using safer alternatives to shell commands whenever possible. The bottom line, command injection turns your web application into a remote terminal for hackers. Always treat user input as potentially malicious. And remember, if you can type it in a terminal, a hacker might be able to execute it through your vulnerable app. To wrap up, that's how easily hackers can exploit websites. Remember, the number one rule is to never trust user input. Have you ever spotted an attack like this in the wild? Share your story in the comments below. If you learned something today, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and stay secure.